I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you're here in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not and, as uh, simple you know, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. See, the show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Hey there. Did you know Kroger always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Kroger app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Kroger today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Murder on the Dance Floor podcast. Who gave me that suggestion for the title? Ash04. Absolutely sensational. I had to get it into the start so I don't forget it when I'm editing later on. Fantastic pod title name. All credit to Ash and Discord there. But we are on post-match Raw. We are here to discuss Liverpool winning 3-0 in the FA Cup round of whatever it is as we progress into the round of uh, whatever the hell is, quarterfinals. I'm having a mint start. Um, I introduce my guests as I remember how to speak here and then we'll get into the game. Lisa Marie, how are you doing, Lisa Marie? I am doing wonderful, Guy. How about you? Um... I always enjoy watching my children play a match. Just, you know, throw back to uh, my um, my actual soccer mom days. Or I'm sorry, I know it's not soccer, but anyway. <laughs> we'll let you off, seeing as my child was on tonight, seemingly. <laughs> <laughs> it's Trey Diori can be my child. Anything you that Harry. makes you feel a fraction of as old as I am is, yeah. is good by me. Yeah, he's everyone's child. He's that bloody young. We also have my old partner in crime over on Face Off and One Up and etc. Carl, how are you doing, Carl? Not too bad, guy. Glad to to get on the the pod tonight and and talk about another good performance. See, we just need championship teams, lads, and the others won't be can't be asked to do it. So we need we need the old guard. Oh, dear me. Um. I will remember how to speak as this podcast progresses. Um, But, Carl, I'll start with you. Um, It's a weird one because we obviously had the cup final on on the weekend. And I think certainly when you hear like Dave and stuff preview the game, they were more concerned about this game and the effect on the Everton game. But we obviously had to win either way. So looking at our starting eleven, I mean, I was kind of surprised, probably more so with Elliot being in there, seeing as he barely had functioning limbs towards the end of the cup final. But are you surprised how strong we went in the um, with the starting eleven? Yeah, it was somewhat surprising. I mean, in the run-up to the game, it was, I mean, I'm off work this week, so, you know, I'm trying to fill my time. And this morning I was kind of trying to get engagement, trying to, 
get people's best guesses of the team because it, it's the one game where it's really hard to, to pick. We knew a lot of the kids were going to play, but it was like, how, how much was he going to go virtually full kids? Was he going to try and balance it out? Obviously, that's what he did. He, you know, he tried to get a bit of experience in there. So one week could, we could try and go and win the game and, and secondly because you know you don't want to quite throw a team of kids to the lions you know we, we remember what happened um a few years ago when we were forced to do so against aston villa because the rest of our squad was uh off uh globe trotting so um you, you know that's gonna have an ill effect on, on confidence so um it, it is a good idea to balance things out but that said you know two players you didn't think would be starting would be Harvey Elliott and Virgil van Dijk because they played every minute of the final and, and both put so much in um, and as you said I, I think Harvey he covers every blade of grass whenever he plays so he always looks kind of gassed but he looked particularly gassed after the final so um, it's certainly was a surprise to see him in there yeah he might get a break at the weekend but I suppose it is your child Lisa Marie I mean surprised with it's probably Van Dijk and Elliot that are the main two but obviously Gakpo starting he is the only fit senior forward um, Bradley's played quite a lot and he's, he's now one of the older heads in there so how, what did you make of the uh, starting 11? Yeah I mean I, I think I was surprised to see Elliot, but I, I think you just needed, and, and it's funny to actually say this phrase, you needed to balance out some more experience with, you know, the, uh, against the younger, um, you know, less first team experience players. I mean, you know, age wise, Harvey obviously fits, you know, right in the mix of, of most of those that started tonight. But, um, you know, on your forward line, you, you know, you've got somebody making their debut, um, you know, along with Gakpo. So I think I think I'm guessing that was the intent. And, and I do. I don't think I mean, Harvey may be on the bench for the weekend, but I, I certainly wouldn't expect him to start. Um, Van Dyke again, I was I was a little bit surprised, but I know, you know, you really need to manage kind of Kanate's minutes. So so I think that was a little bit of it as well is let Van Dyke start kind of set the you know, the tone, if you will, and, you know, and then bring in Ibu in the second half like he did. So um, a little bit surprised, but but overall, it was it was pretty much what I expected to see. Yeah, it's not like we're swept with options at the minute as well, is it? <laughs> I mean, it seems to be we have, there is probably some Bradley did centers. come off, mm. you know, what at like seventy ish minutes or whatever yeah. on, on Sunday. So so yeah. Um yeah, I mean that's the the only thing the only one that worries me a bit is I mean Gomez playing both games. So I, I'll be a little bit interested to see what the right back situation is at the weekend. But but still it's Wednesday and we don't play till Sunday. So it you know I think it's it Saturday. Okay. Oh is it it is Saturday, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Sorry. Um, yeah. But even still, Wednesday to Saturday, um, I mean, I know that isn't a lot, but but based on the schedule for the rest of the for the rest of the season, that's that's decent. So. <laughs> so um, yeah, then, then we have till Thursday. So at least we have a, a decent break after Forest. After so, after Saturday. Yeah. yeah. So that's not too bad. But so, I think Robo was missing tonight. So hopefully. He's yeah, Robo wasn't on at all. So I would imagine he'll probably start left back. As I said, I right back it would be interesting you know mm-hmm. if, it, if it will be Bradley again or or if he moves um Gomez over there but we're, we're jumping way ahead so I'll stop yeah, sorry yeah, yeah we have a game to talk <laughs> uh, yeah, we could skip the debate first for another yeah. occasion yeah we could skip the first five minutes because it was awful um a word for Southampton Carl obviously only recently relegated there is some familiar names in there and some new names but I mean, they are or were doing well in the championship. I think they're third or fourth, um, to my knowledge. But there is some names in there. I mean, Sulemana looks talented. Mara, talented. Um, midfield's probably a bit more Premier League. Or, I know Aribo made his name at Rangers. But, um, yeah, any anyone of note from Southampton just in the team lineup alone? 
Yeah, I think as you said, Suleimana really stood out because we we all remember how good he can be from the the four four on the final day last season, um, in which he he gave us a torrid time, and I think even in the week of that, then there was even rumours that Liverpool were kind of having a look at him. So um, he he is a real talent. Um, maybe the end products not quite there for him ex- except when he he played against Liverpool at one time I, I was shocked actually during the game um I, I would have you know I haven't watched too much championship this season but I would have assumed that he, he would have been scoring some goals but apparently he hasn't scored since he scored against Liverpool so um but that said I still fully expect him to score against us and um, he very much gets himself in in dangerous positions he's lightning fast and um, you know he's unlucky obviously in the end as we'll go on to talk about not, not to end up with a goal um, but they certainly managed to, to hold on to, to some talented players both, both young and, and experienced you know they, they're obviously the, the likes of Walker Peters and, and Armstrong and he kind of came on later in the game but um, they, they still have a lot of talent there and it's, it's no wonder obviously until I think um, was it just a week until the weekend they were on a bit of an unbeaten run so yeah. they are going well this season there's some good players in there and I'm sure they are they are strong contenders to come back up to the Premier League if not by automatic you know possibly through the uh, the playoffs so um, you know we, we knew you know even with a few players rested it wasn't going to be an easy game particularly given the the rotation that we've had to do yeah, yeah, it looks like they're rotated a bit. We, as you mentioned, when Carl Walker Peters on the bench, he, he's clearly a Premier League player. I mean, that's basically my my takeaway for that. It's like how how are they sliding the Championship when we're watching Sheffield United and Burnley every week? Like, it's so so weird at times. Football, but hey ho, we'll probably see them next season at some point. Um, and if they don't, it'll be massively disappointing. So let's get into the game. And Carl, I'll start with you. Pretty bad start. <laughs> um, Goal for them, but it's fortunately ruled offside. It is quite clearly offside. Um, Seku Mara, one of the talented forwards we just talked about there, it, it, it kind of set the example of how the first 20 or so minutes went because they kept breaking our line, whether it was onside or offside, but it was always threatening. Yeah, um, I mean, I think at the start of the game, looking at our team, um, the the two points I'd make is that the, the senior players looked tired and the, the young players looked nervous. And, you know, both things are to, to be expected, you know, given the, the final on the weekend and how many minutes are in the legs. I, I found myself laughing at one point where uh, Van Dyke had to kind of stretch to, to deal with a, a loose pass and he kind of, the look on his face looked like, why are you making me run? <laughs> you know, he just didn't want to be running. Um, but yeah, they, they were straight out of out of the trap Southampton, you know, their their front three are quite quite quick and um tenacious and um they were they were causing us problems in, in wide areas, you know, particularly going up against Simicas, um, who um maybe didn't have his best game. I'm sure we'll talk about we'll that go, more. We'll go with Rusty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he didn't look a hundred percent. Um and down our right side, you know, with especially Harvey Elliott just didn't seem to have the, the gas to run. So there wasn't much protection for, for Bradley there. And, um, you know, they got in a few times and, and Quivine, the, the hero of the weekend, he had to be at it again with a, with a few important saves. Um, but, you know, as much as, you know, it's easy to look at the youth in our team and obviously tired legs in the weekend, but certainly can't take anything away from Southampton. You know, they, they came to Anfield to play from, from the minute go and, and they were going to cause us problems. Their manager talked about it in the run up that he was confident that, that they could cause us problems and, and they certainly did. Yeah, absolutely. And coming to you, Lee Summary, I mean, Carl mentioned the player I wanted to talk about there. I mean, we have a, they have a couple more chances through Suleimana and, uh, and Mara um, forces a shot from Quivin. Um I don't know why I've took now to go with the Irish name, but I'll go back to Keller. <laughs> I think I may have got it close enough there. But at yeah, least, Maria, I think you got it. Try, yeah. try would be proud. <laughs> don't know about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think I'm qualified <laughs> to say it's pretty yeah. good. I'll take, there I'll you take go. It. That's right. I'm going back to Irish Kevin. Um, <laughs> I've nailed it once. But um, going on to Irish Kevin, Lisa Ray, I mean, he's been a, a topic of discussion mainly in these cup podcasts because. 
Europa League, there was a couple iffy performances. I mean, even in the earlier rounds of the League Cup, it was always a discussion. I think me and Dave had one. I can't remember the game. Well, it might have been Leicester, if I remember correctly, where he just seemed to... A couple of mistakes, a couple minor things, but it, he seems to, as soon as he's had a run, and this is probably why we've been harsh discussing him, but he's had a run in the team now, whether it's the odd little break, but since Alisson's got injured, he's been first choice. But, I mean, he's been bloody fantastic since he's been number one. And we needed him again today. He was amazing in the cup final. And tonight, I mean, the, the saves in the first half especially, it just helped settle the nervous team in, into the game. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that is the, and I've, and I've said it on previous podcasts where we've been discussing Queeving. He, he needs a run. I mean, like any player, he, you know, I mean, obviously goalkeepers a little bit different where, where you are more likely to kind of come in cold and it is, it is a little bit different, but I, I, I have felt pre earlier in the season that it was, you know, he was maybe a little unfairly criticized to, to a certain degree for, for two reasons. One, he just hadn't been playing. And two, we're so used to looking at the best goalkeeper in the world, you know, Allison Becker, that, you know, it, it's it's a little unfair to expect Kelleher to come in and immediately be at Allison's level. Um, but now that he has, you know, very much here in the last couple of months, been playing more regularly, you know, getting that confidence. I mean, we're reaping the benefits of that at, at exactly the right time. Um, you know, of course, he was wonderful in the cup final on Sunday. And and yeah, I think him being able to be just quietly confident and right on it at the beginning was was very much what we needed um, across the board to just kind of settle everybody down because it, it did feel a little I don't know even what the, did I even write something decent down here in my notes it, it we just kind of needed to settle those those first few minutes and and to be fair you know you've got a team of players on the field that don't play together regularly so that I think is to be expected that you know you're you're not going to have that same level of connectivity and you know fluid passing, et cetera, et cetera, with, you know, with players that aren't necessarily used to playing with each other on a regular basis. And, but I think Kelleher being able to, to do what he did, um, you know, in the opening, what, 15, 20 or so minutes of the game was, was massive. Yeah, absolutely. And as long as Allison's out, I mean, maybe Klopp was right. Maybe he's the best number two and it, it just takes a little run to see it. But he has been a massive player for us in, in, in recent games and recent weeks. He's He's been fantastic. But Carl, to give you a chance to discuss your, your countrymen, obviously it's almost a shame Bazunu didn't play for them because it would have been a battle of the Irish keepers. But um, <laughs> it, it must be intriguing for you because obviously bazunu has got the number one shirt at the minute, I believe. But if Kelleher gets a decent amount of minutes for Liverpool. Obviously, the international break is coming up in March, I believe. It wouldn't surprise if he gets us a shot at, for the Ireland number one shirt, at least. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. I think Ireland announced today that John O'Shea will be taking charge for the, the two games as interim manager with a view to appointing a permanent manager in, in April. So um, I'm sure now in the next few Days he'll he'll be kind of getting his ideas together on on what his squad's going to be and and um, who's going to play and you know it's I think at the moment it's hard to look past Keller given that he's he's playing at a higher level than than Bazuna um they're they're both very talented young keepers I mean it's Ireland are fortunate to have two two good keepers I and mean, we've always had decent keepers in the past like the given and such and they're they're big gloves to fill um but the, these two lads you know it's it's very promising for us and you know it's good to have competition and um, it's a shame we don't have as much competition in some other positions um but at least we have them be- between the sticks but but at the moment I, I think it's it's fair to say Keller is probably kind of got a got a nose ahead um given you know his he's taken advantage of this this good fortune for him and in, in Allison getting injured um you know I I'd, I'd, I'd agree completely with what Lisa said it, you know it, it's people were very harsh on Keller earlier in the season you know trying to 
say the cup runs in the past were, were purple patches and this is his real level, etc. etc. Et but I feel like being the sub keeper is probably the most unforgiving role in football. It, it's so hard. You have to come out from the cold and people expect you to just be going. And yet people will forgive, you know, outfield players in, in the same position. You know, if an outfield player hasn't played recently and comes in, I know it happened to, to Simicast a few times over, over the past couple of years and, and he has a kind of rusty game and, and people look at him and say, oh, well, he hasn't played in five games. Why isn't that that said about Keller as well? Why is Keller expected to just come in, have not played the last five, six games and, and just expected to save everything and deal with every cross and make every pass, you know, you know, sharpness and match match experience it, it's so so important um, but now that he's had that run he, he's been excellent lately and I think it's the greatest compliment to him is that people have now stopped talking about how Allison's going to be a big miss for Man City that's not mm-hmm. the focus anymore you know people think Keller can do the job and maybe it helps that Allison tends to have the odd gaff against Man City but, say, he's always um, gaff against City anyway <laughs> yeah but but even so, I mean, Keller is playing really well, and you know I'm, I have full confidence in him. You know, in the the remaining games up to the to the international break, and then we'll we'll see kind of what happens with Allison after that. I'm Alex Rodriguez, and I'm Jason Kelly from Bloomberg. This is the Deal. Each week, you'll hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal making across sports, media, and entertainment. And that is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not uh, as simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many more know, doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Are you that person who has everything? The coolest merch and those must-have fan threads? Well, over at our Anfield Index shop, we've gone that extra mile when it comes to pimping up your Liverpool collection. From our popular range of bespoke design t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies and hats, to our signature edition mugs, prints and coasters, all provided with fast worldwide shipping. We have something for every red. We also stock official LFC merchandise and are licensed with the Premier League and UEFA to sell official iron-on shirt badges and sleeve patches. As a listener to this podcast, you can get 10% off everything with coupon code AIPRO10. Just head over to anfieldindex.shop or find us on Etsy by searching for Anfield Index. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Obviously, he will have these next few games. Um, I am very much touching wood. We don't need another injury in there because we know who the third choice is. And I don't have the patience for that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but, I mean, the first half wasn't, Massively interesting, and I wasn't particularly taking notes because I was editing podcasts because I am an idiot. That's what I will go with there. I will not go into further details. Um, but let's pick out some some of the players to discuss. Obviously, we picked out Kelleher there. Um, we, we, everyone knows Van Dyke. The young midfielders, Lee Summary, obviously McConnell and Clark came on in the cup final and were bloody excellent. It, I'm not saying they struggled in that first half an hour or so, but the midfield seemed to be the... I'll go with issue, for want of a better word, but there just didn't seem to be anyone there offering protection to the defence. Obviously, it doesn't help whilst Joe Gomez is playing there, who's not a not a midfielder, but uh, McConnell and Clark, I think, obviously good on the ball, but He's, if once we get into a more settled side and we actually have more than three people available, it'd be nice to see a bit more defensive awareness. That, that's probably the only thing I'd take away from that 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it does. It goes back to, to what I was saying, you know, a little bit ago. You've got, so you've got Joe Gomez as the six. I mean, has he ever played that role before? I mean, not no. in my memory, <laughs> no. but, you know, I, I don't want to speak for his entire career. Um, so, yeah, so so you've got that, um, you know, in, in a di- so I, I think it is. I think it's just it, it goes back to my earlier comment that you've got players, not just so much that don't play together on the field on a regular basis, but are also not necessarily playing in their usual position. So, I mean, I can imagine being out there and, you know, and maybe Clark or look it up and being like, oh, that's where Gomez is. Okay. 
okay, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking he's going to be, you know, I'm using my hands like y'all can see me right now, but, you know, he, he should be over there. And, and so I, I think probably everybody just sort of getting acclimated to their positional awareness, mm-hmm. uh, you know, probably was a large part of that first 15, 20 minutes. And, oh, OK, you're going to drop back and defend the, it, it, you just all of those things, which you would certainly hope that they'd worked on in practice. But but I mean, really, how much time did they really have to do that? So, uh, yeah, I think it, it was just a matter, you know, I mean, it's it, it even though you've got experienced players like Gomez on the field, he's not playing in anything close to what his usual position is. So so I think it. You know, all of that should be looked at with, you know, with a, with just a little bit of grace and forgiveness that, you know, they aren't going to be playing perfectly. Um, but, hey, they played just good enough, and that's all we needed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't want to be too harsh with them. And as you say, there was no pre- preparation time in this. If anything, right. training, training was simply massages and ice buffs, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Half the team could not move on Sunday. Um Carl, I mean, one other player I want to talk about before we'll talk about Kumas when he scores. Cody Gakpo. Now, again, I don't want to be overly negative. We won 3 0. He's a very weird player. Because one thing I'd, asso- I'd associate with Gakpo is like precise finishing. Even when he like doesn't get involved in games and stuff like that, he always seems to have a reliable shot on him. Whereas today, he didn't seem to have one of, <laughs> he seemed to have two left feet. That's what I'll go with. It was very odd. Yeah, um, he's not been on his best form of late. I think the the decision making isn't always there. I mean, at one point, you know, up until the goal, we hadn't really created anything. But the, the one time we looked dangerous was where Cody got the the ball to feet in the box, and instead of shooting the first time, he, he tries to kind of turn it, and by then someone's yeah. gotten back around him. Um, so the decision making hasn't quite been there, and then even when he's making the right decisions, maybe the the accuracy, as you said, isn't there. And you know, I, I'd agree with you. I do associate him as being a good finisher. I, I think you know he, he's probably um up there among the better finishers at the club when he's on it, but he's very much a confidence player. And I, I think Klopp touched on that recently, and and Klopp kind of held his hands up and and said that he's guilty of kind of maybe taking that confidence away from him because you know I think um, it was quite frustrating earlier in the season for you know watching Gakpo from, from the outside looking in whereby you know one game he'd start up front then the next game and he might play well then the next game he's on the bench he doesn't get on then the next game he's at left midfield mm-hmm. then you know and it's a lot of chop and change it's very hard for him to get settled and, and Klopp very much kind of held his hands up and said yeah that, that was my fault you know mixing up his position now he seems to be leaving him up front which is good um, but he just needs to, to get that confidence maybe you know a couple of goals and, and then suddenly he'll, he'll be firing again hopefully but it's just not quite there at the moment and I'm sure of course that you know like many of the other senior players he's he was probably tired tonight because he, he did play I think it was about 80 minutes um on the weekend so mm-hmm. and he worked hard so um you know that, that's a given that he would be tired but it is unfortunate at the moment that he's not quite firing particularly because you know we have three other senior forwards who who are injured um but but I'm sure he'll he'll get there again. Obviously, Klopp's recognised what the the issue was, and he's he's trying to fix that. So hopefully, sooner than later, he's 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 banging in uh, goals again and and looking, uh, you know, the the confident Cody that we knew last season. Yeah, that's the thing. I have no I have no doubts of his quality to some the consistency. Once he gets it, I think. I think he's already one of our little selection of players that's got over 10 goals that might not be the most in the Premier League, but when you're going for all the cups, you need scorers in every bloody place. So, yeah, I think maybe once we settle down a bit and a bit more pure rotation with with first-teamers in that forward line, it it could help. But, I mean, he's shown his quality. I can't remember the minute. It was in the second half where he just decided to try and skin four people, and he nearly did, (laughs) and nearly scored. Um, So the the quality is definitely there. I think it's just confidence, as you say, Carl. Um, Lisa Marie, coming to you for the first goal then. It's... 
I'll say Lewis, but this has gotten la- labelled as Louis, but he is above 12, so I'm going with Lewis. Um, <laughs> Lewis Kumas. Um, it takes a deflection, but it's really well worked by Bobby Clark in, in, in the press. Cuts inside, take, the shot takes a deflection, but it, it's a nice moment because he is obviously one who we've not seen so far this season. Maybe a surprise he was starting with Dan's on the bench. He's obviously made a, a little bit of a name for himself before today and then a much bigger name for him after today. But it, it was nice to see a, another new lad make, make his mark, even though it was deflected, but a lovely moment for him. 100%. Now, okay, he was the one who I think I didn't really, you know, when I saw his name on the team sheet, I, I couldn't mm. picture him. So I had to look him up. <laughs> So yet another of these these young guys that, you know, I could be sitting in my living room with with my own 18, early 19 year old son, you know, playing Xbox or FIFA or, you know, whatever. Um, But yeah, no, it was I mean, what a week for that kid, you know, to to to, um, you know, be at the at the cup final and then just, you know, make his debut and, and score his first goal. I mean, it's just. It's incredible, and it's just so nice to see. And that pass from Clark to him for the goal was gorgeous. I mean, that's my notes say, just say Clark to Kumas, lovely. Um, so yeah, it's just it's you know all of this is just so so exciting. You know, just in the greater context of of seeing these young players, you know, not just be able to come on and hold their own, but to make real and definite quality impact you know in these matches is just it, it's just so exciting and you know just gives me a whole other sense of you know overall optimism for the team so you know good on him yeah absolutely and Carl, I'm, I'm defaulting to proud mother mode hmm. can y'all tell right absolutely. now absolutely <laughs> uh, Carl, coming to you i mean it's weird because we're obviously similar age and the liverpool academy is it always been the most productive, especially in the last 20 years? I mean, since Gerard, we, we didn't have many before Trent. Um, we obviously had little smatterings like Suso and stuff like that, but obviously they obviously went and have good careers. But it is nice because I'm sure you saw the start of Gerard, maybe Owen as well. But it's nice now again to see consistent academy progress because it's been Trent, then Curtis, but now we've got all this bloody lot coming through at the same time. I mean, I'm not saying it's our class of 92 or whatever, but it, it's nice that the academy is at least something to look forward to. They may not all make it, but it'll be all, all of them are bloody interesting. Yeah, I mean, I kind of would have gotten into to follow in Liverpool in the, the early noughties and I, I think kind of at that point we kind of just came out of the period where the, the likes of Gerard and for that own Carragher Fowler you know we'd have a we'd had a nice kind of run of, mm. of players breaking through and there was some others that kind of got in and around maybe played for a season or two and then were sold on for a little bit of money like but it it, it was productive but kind of in my time as a as a fan, like you you can really count the amount of players that have come through on, on your fingers. You, the likes of um Sterling and um uh, Trent and Curtis Jones really up up until this mm-hmm. season that have really made it. A, a few others maybe like the likes of Martin Kelly and Stephen Warnock, who maybe if not for injury, you know, could have been good squad players for, mm-hmm. for Liverpool. But, but you're really, really having to, to kind of rack your brain there to think, you know, we haven't been nearly as productive as um, some of our rivals have. So it, it's, it's great this season to see so many players break through. And it's not just, you know, we've had players in the past. I mean, someone was talking earlier about that, that game against Villa a few years ago and, you know, I was looking through to see kind of where are all those players at and most of them have obviously moved on. They're playing either in the lower leagues in England or they're playing in Scotland, a lot of them, surprisingly. Um, but but they haven't obviously made it. And it's it's not just enough to play a cup game or two. Like you really have to, to kind of make your, your yourself known. And the players are doing that, you know, the the Obviously, Bradley, Kwanzaa, probably top of the pile. But on top of that, um, you know, McConnell, Clark, and and most recently, Dan's. You're really looking at them and you're saying, you know, 
I could see them in in the team in in a couple of years, you know, still still around, and and that's what it's all about. Not making a couple of squads, it, it's about still being in the team a couple of years later. So it's so so exciting, and and obviously, Kumis was one we we got to see in the first team for the first time tonight, and you know, I, I thought watching the first half that the real issue for Liverpool in attack was a a, la- a lack of pace, a lack of directness and while Kumas isn't the quickest he, he seemed to be the quickest of the front three and if anyone was kind of going to make that breakthrough it did seem to be him and you know he, he seemed very keen to, to make that move to, to drift in from the wide area and get a shot away and it, it, he didn't quite manage it till that moment but when when he managed it at that moment like he, it was a, it was a great shot and obviously he gets a bit of luck with the the um the deflection but you know you you feel if there wasn't a body in the way he may well have, have found the opposite corner um and you know credit to clark as well for the the pass um you know him and mcconnell kind of you touched on it earlier started the the match a little scrappy maybe lost the ball a couple of times but they they certainly grew into the game and um their, their confidence grew and and we, we saw the product from that like it was a great were well worked goal from the the two young lads yeah, absolutely, and it, it did settle us in um, for the second half as well. Um, we did make subs at half time. I think they did as well. They are listed here somewhere. We obviously bring on Ebu um, for Virgil half each. Don't want to risk them too much. Did they not make one? No, they did not. I thought they did for some reason. Um, I mean, the second half does start with them probably... A, in the ascendancy again, Lisa Marie, obviously Suleimana has a chance, um, which Kelleher does well again with. But after that, it, it seems like, well, basically Ibu <laughs> dealt with everything after that moment. I mean, I always go on about Ibu. I think he's the most underrated player in world football. Um, but Lisa Marie, I mean, your, your thoughts on, on, on Ibu, because you're obviously a newer fan, but what, what, do you, what do you make of Kanati? Like, how does he help hold up in your estimations when you see, like, Matip and other Premier League players and stuff you've seen? Yeah, I mean, I think, I I don't think he's underrated to us as Liverpool fans, but, but I think across the Premier League or, you know, even in the other leagues, I think he is underrated. I think... And and I don't know why. Um, I don't know if it's just because I don't know. I, I honestly don't. Um, you know, I mean, I know he does seem to get a lot of these little knocks and injuries, so, you know, so maybe for the not regular Liverpool fan, you know, who isn't watching him all the time, they just they just don't catch as much of him. You know, maybe they're when they're watching Liverpool play, it just happens mm-hmm. that he you know isn't playing next to Virgil but but yeah I mean and, and it, there's just he is and there there is there's just something about him that he's I can't even think of the right word I I want to say there's something kind of brave about him which sounds kind of silly but mm-hmm. um I kind of have to remind myself that he's as young as he is I guess if, if that makes sense you know no um, I fully understand you you know, and, and, and sometimes even initially, um, you know, sometimes he does do things that are a little, you know, absent minded is a little harsh, but you know, but, the, but, but that's what you have to remind yourself. This is a with. younger guy. Yeah. He has not played, you know, he just doesn't have as much of the in-game experience, but, you know, but it doesn't seem, he seems to recover from any of those missteps that he makes it, it, it doesn't get in his head, I guess, is what I'm very badly trying to say right now. So, yeah, but no, I do. I, I There's something about him that I just enjoy watching him. You know, it, you know, we're, we've been so lucky this, this season, you know, especially with Matt getting, you know, injured so early that, you know, with him and, you know, and Kwanzaa, you don't even flinch when you see his name on the team sheet anymore. You know, it's just like, mm-hmm. okay. Um, <laughs> and he's so much younger. So, yeah, no, Ibu is, he's great. Um, he is great. And, and, I mean, if you think about how good he is now, just think three or so years from now, how good he will be. He's just going to get better. Yeah, absolutely. Carl, anything you want to add? And throwing Kwanzaa is there as well. Obviously, played the full game. Um, 
just been growing in confidence all season, but on, on Ebu Kwanzaa, and even if you want to just praise Van Dyke for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, starting the, the, the season, you know, you kind of looked at our centre-back situation and um, you know Matip obviously didn't have the best season last year and he's no stranger to injury unfortunately uh, Joe Gomez obviously until this season he hadn't been at his best for, for some time um, and, and we know Kanate is, is prone to knocks and you kind of wonder did we need another centre half um, and then Kwanzaa plays in pre-season and you know I, I think the only Liverpool fan that, that really saw him breaking in that that I'm aware of really seemed to be uh, Lubo. You know, he was he was really ringing that bell for for Kwanzaa. Mm. And you know, we everyone else thought he was just being daft that this lad just disappear after preseason. But he's he's really really kind of established himself as as I mentioned earlier. He's now one of the squad. Like, um, you know, he's he's excellent. He, he seems to have it all. I, I think maybe the the one thing maybe if if you want to be harsh and, and scrutinise is, is maybe the acceleration is, isn't quite there. But mm-hmm. you know that's not there for Matip either. And obviously we we've seen Matip have a, a couple of world class seasons for for Liverpool. And obviously I, I think he started this season world class, and it was unfortunate to lose him to injury. But you know as these these seem to suggest, we you know. We, we don't seem to miss him now and, and that's such a credit to Kanate and, and Kwanzaa you know Kanate the, the niggles you know disrupting rhythm was it an issue and it was an issue again at the start of the season and you you were concerned about that but the club finally seemed to have gotten a handle on, on his fitness issues you know they're managing his minutes somewhat they're bringing good. Kwanzaa in where they can yeah certainly um, you know they're, they're subbing him off here and there you know maybe he's playing 70 75 minutes 80 minutes but not not quite the full 90 it's it's smart and they're managing to, to keep him fit and you know I, I've almost stopped worrying about him which, which is uh, hopefully I don't regret that but it, you mm. know, he has been <laughs> excellent kind of since since Matip got injured and, and so has Kwanzaa and, and then obviously have Joe Gomez who hasn't seen that many minutes at centre half but he's done a solid job when he's been called upon there you know he, he certainly seems to be on a mission to play every defensive position you know but now having played defence midfields now we just need to stick him in, in between the sticks you know if Kelleher does, does pick up a knock you know we know who to call on you don't need Adrian get Joe Gomez in there he'll do a job false, false uh, nine next for Joe and then, then goalkeeper it's this, this, yeah. Get that goal. Well. And then uh, Van Dyke, what a season! I mean, they, they were talking about it. I think um, a half time. I think actually just prior to the game, uh, Roy Keane was talking about. He was asked whether kind of Van Dyke's back to his pre ACL best. Now I think it was kind of overblown Van Dyke's dip after his injury. Don't get me wrong, there there was a little bit of a dip, but I don't think it was as bad as as some opposition fans mm-hmm. and some pundits would would make you think. But he certainly. You know, kind of from from this top top level, there, there was a, a slight slight dip, but he certainly w- right back up at the top top level. I mean, he was an absolute colossus in the cup final, and then after playing 120 minutes there, he's he's asked to play again tonight. And as I said, I laughed to myself at one point because he looked like he was annoyed to be made to run, but I don't blame him. But but despite the fact that I'm sure his legs were killing him, um, you know, he 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 did his job in in the first half and then thankfully we were able to take him off at half time and hopefully he's a hundred percent now for the, the forest game on the weekend because he he'll certainly be needed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Need to protect him for the rest of the season. Well for the rest of his bloody Liverpool career, let's be honest. Um uh, not too much of no happened after this. We obviously bring on, um, well, the lads who did goals. <laughs> the lad who did goals. They do some subs as well. Uh, Sulemana goes off for Armstrong. I thought he was probably their big danger man, to be fair. So I was kind of happy he went off. I mean, he may have been tiring or something like that. Uh, Carl Walker-Peters, who we mentioned in the intro bit, um, coming on, he did get, go off a few minutes later. Um, so hopefully nothing too serious for him. Or maybe the manager was just being a bit of a knobber. Um, 
but hopefully he's fine. Uh, Kumas went off replaced by the Danger Man Dans, uh, and we bring on Alexis McAllister for James McConnell. Uh, they also bring on Che Adams for Adorzy, and Rothwell comes on for comes off for Lord Voldemort, who came on. Um, or John Joe Shelby's son will go with. But Lisa Marie, those those were the subs. But the game does spark into life with Jaden Dans. I mean, the goals are sensational. But eighteen year old coming on and making that much of an impact, just a bit a bit more of a predatory instri- instinct in the box. I mean, it's just that that finish from for the for, for his first goal is fantastic. I don't need a VPN. I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> This is what I used to tell myself before I hooked up with LibertyShield.com. Not only is my home internet now fully encrypted, but I can now access all the websites I want, whenever I want, and do so from absolutely anywhere. As a Liverpool fan, I love to know I can now watch every match, regardless of whether it's on UK TV or not. My Liberty Shield VPN makes sure nothing is blocked and guarantees me super fast streaming speed throughout that match. You can get connected right now with their software package, which includes a 48-hour no-obligation free trial and instant access to their apps for Apple, Android, Fire TV, PC, Mac and Android TV. Or go a step further like I have and get one of their pre-configured VPN routers. These small but powerful devices allow you to easily connect every device in your home to VPN making it the perfect solution for smart TVs, mag boxes and games consoles. Visit libertyshield.com today and use coupon code AIVPN25 to get 25% off at checkout. And let's not forget who assisted with that goal. Ellen, <laughs> Harvey, <laughs> Harvey Hanahan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, hey, you know. Had the, my second proud mom moment of the of the podcast. No, um, no, Dan's is. I mean, again, not to repeat myself from earlier, but just how exciting is this to to have you know again this kid come on and and not just a look like he belongs and but b make an impact and in a contribution like that, not just once, but getting ahead of myself twice, two 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 goals. Um, but no, it was it was seamless. Him coming on and just slotting right in. Um, now it maybe it wasn't as seamless. This was there was an, a period, kind of from about fifty four to just before that goal, where I was my attention was on something that I was doing for work. I was more listening than watching the game for for about fifteen or so minutes, but. But the fact is, you know, you look up, maybe not necessarily immediately realizing the subs that have been made and you're not, you know, whoever has come on is not sticking out like a sore thumb. You know, it's just it's just the seamless, you know, change into the team. And yeah, I mean, Dan's is he's exciting. And, um, you know, we can only hope that this is, you know, just the beginning of what what we're going to have an opportunity to see from him, not just for the rest of this season, but, you know in the years to come. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Carl, your your thoughts on the striker. We just mentioned the Academy products there. And well, I don't want to lay all the all the pressure on him, but this club is synonymous with with bringing through young strikers. I mean, I don't want to say he'll be the next Owen or whatever, but it would be great for, for the next generation of fans to, to finally see a homegrown striker in the mould of a Robbie Fowler of a, of a Michael Owen. Obviously, very, very early to say stupid stuff like that, but he does look bloody excellent. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, obviously, when you're looking at a young player coming in at first, you know, you're keeping an eye on... on talent you know first and foremost but for me the the other kind of characteristics I look for are you know confidence and and maturity and I think another player obviously that was on the pitch that 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 impressed me in that way since he's come in has been Bobby Clark and I think Dan's very much has that too where he doesn't look out of place among senior players you know we don't expect the same 
level of know-how and consistency with, with a young player. But you nonetheless don't want them to, to look like they, they're they thinking that they don't belong. You know, you want them to, to look like they, they feel, I, I belong on this pitch. And, and he very much gives that impression. And, and that is so, so important. I mean, the moment he got on the, the pitch against Luton, you know, we were seeing, you know, clean touch, good vision, you know, wanting to get to, to get himself in dangerous positions. Again, he comes on in the cup. You know, he has a couple of chances to, to score um, the, the, the um, header that's touched onto the bar yeah, and, and obviously the, the goal line scramble. I mean, he just, he, you know, you think he was in the team all along and, and that's the greatest compliment you, you could pay him. And, and again, now to, tonight he comes on and, and he finally gets that goal and then, you know, as, as uh, Lisa alluded to, he goes and gets another one. Like, it, it, he, I mean, before the game, you know, I was talking about how important it was that these players, these young players in, enjoy tonight and, and make the most of the opportunity. Because, you know, if we were to get Premier League opposition, which we now have, or if we were to, to go out, if it had gone that way, it's unlikely to be that many more opportunities for some of them because obviously we, we touch wood, we hope, you know, that, that we'll put this, this run of injuries behind us and that players will come back and there'll be less opportunities. But, it, but I did say obviously that the, you know, the likes of Kwanzaa and Bradley, they're now part of the squad and, and you'd expect the likes of Clark and McConnell to still see a few minutes off the bench perhaps. Um, but I feel now maybe you can add Dan's to that. You know, Jada's out for no, another few weeks at least, possibly a couple months. I think it's that international um, break, isn't it? At the earliest. Yeah, and and uh, Ben Doak, who's probably have to classify, uh, you know, at the start of the season, probably our sixth attacker. He's mm. possibly out for the rest of the season. So there is that opportunity now for for Dan's to to establish himself as as that fifth attacker, um, and uh, I think probably he he is that now. You know, he's he's ahead of the likes of Gordon, who you probably would have expected to maybe take the opportunity when when Doak got injured. Um, but he hasn't seen too many minute, minutes, unfortunately, for him. But but Dan's he's had that opportunity. He's taken it now. He's had a couple of goals, and and he he may well be that that fifth attacker now. And we we might see him get some minutes off the bench in 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 the league and and in the Europa League. And you know, going off what we've seen so far, you, you know you'd have expectations that he can be a danger when he comes off that bench. So it's great that he's taken that opportunity and I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing more of him. As I alluded to, he's, he seems to have a great touch, good vision. He's so strong. I mean, he's only turned 18 and, and he can tangle with, with um, established center half. So that says a lot. What will he be in a couple of years when he's done growing? He, he could be an absolute monster. Um, and, you know, most importantly for a forward, he can finish. Um, so it's just so exciting to see, see what he can become. Yeah, that's the thing. You, you mentioned it there. He looks like he belongs. And I think he's only just turned 18. So <laughs> we, we've seen it. I know it's different with forwards and positions and stuff like that. But Curtis Jones didn't really break through properly till 21. And now I think he's 23. And this is probably his second or second. Season and a half for Curtis, where he's become a, a proper, proper first teamer. I know he's had injuries and stuff like that, but the so much time for these young lads and and Dan's looks like he's well on well on the way. Um there was a couple of chances I missed before our goal. Uh Gakpo had one of his spoony finishes where he just decided I will shank this wide. Um Da, 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 da. Uh, they have their big chance to equalise just before the Dan's first goal, to be fair. I think it's Shea Charles' name. Um, oh, I might have done his name backwards there. <laughs> um, but it, is it Shea Adams? Is it Shea? Yeah. Oh, no, the, the S-H-E-A, I think that's his name. Oh, the midfielder. Okay. Um, let, oh, God, I'll, get it, I'll, I'll get it up. I'll get it up. It is Shea Charles. Look at me, I'm professional. Um <laughs> Uh, ball falls to him in the back post. He just he just doesn't ever control it and just puts it wide. Keller probably would have saved it anyway, the way he was playing, to be fair to him. But then the Dan's goal happens. Um, then Gakpo goes on that run that I mentioned in the 85th minute uh, where he just goes, I am a good player. I will do this alone. 
Lisa Marie, 3 0. Um, I can't remember who had the original shot. I should have noted that down. Maybe I'm not a professional. Who <laughs> uh, <laughs> had the shot? Uh, um, I'm not sure. Now, another... Bradley. Connor Bradley. There we go. It was Connor Bradley. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Mine outside the boot shop. For yeah. the record. Yeah. Um, because I adopted Connor a couple months ago. Um, yeah, no, but you know what you haven't mentioned is 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 our other debut player tonight, the one that looks like he's twelve. <laughs> yes, I'm too. He's too young to be t- spoken about. <laughs> Bless him. Oh, anyway, um, no, it was it was good to see that. <coughs> excuse me. Even though we were up by two, we just we just kept knocking at the door, and you know it, it was just fantastic. To, to see that, you know, we, we, we just kept going and, you know, it was, it was phenomenal. Um, you know, and to see, <coughs> sorry, I've decided to get all choked up here. <laughs> just so excited. So, so proud um, of you, son. <laughs> just, just the happy tears. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, but no, when, when, is it Nayani? Am I saying that correctly? Nayani? I, I totally, I mean, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I mean, seriously, my youngest, my youngest, my daughter is 14. She'll be 15 the end of June, which incidentally, I looked up his birthday is when he turned 17. (coughs) He showed up to pick her up, you know, knocked at our door for, you know, a movie date or something. Wouldn't bat an eye. Um, he, (laughs) he He had such a baby face. But again, seamlessly fit into the picture. So chalk one more up for yeah that's the thing that's the thing 16 year old coming on i think he's now our second young third youngest player i think he is actually um we will never replace that jerome sinclair one because he was basically 15 year old i don't think we're beating that um but yeah just excellent obviously i think he arrived from leicester in the summer if i remember correctly so even our academy recruiting has just gone up a level in recent times um but yeah, Carl, Carl, the goal itself, I mean, Bradley, little outside the boot shot, um, good, did a decent save, maybe could have pushed it wide um, uh, a bit more lumly, but follows up, gets ahead of the centre-back, and it, 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 instinctive finish. Yeah, I mean, um, it's a great effort from from Bradley. I mean, he's he's but he scored one goal, but he very well could have had four or five at this point. You know, he's he's so dangerous when he gets in in front of goal. Um, as you said, the the keeper should have done better, and I think he knows it because he looks frustrated with himself when the ball goes into the net. But nonetheless, credit to to Dan's. You know, he he's chasing in on it much like he the the goal scramble in, in the cup final you know he, he he's hungry when he sees the balls in the box he wants to connect with it and he's going to fling himself in at it he's very brave um you know and that's what you need from from a forward and you know it's a he's not going to uh, he's not going to give the keeper a second chance and he puts it in the back of the net and to a, a brace for him and it's just unfortunately he never got a, a chance to to find his hat trick because you know you would have probably backed him to to get it with which is how uh, on it he, he looked on the night i mean cr- credit to the, to the lad and uh, as i said before i just can't wait to see what what's to come of him but what's to come for us Carl, starting with you, I'll let Lisa Marie <laughs> recover from a coughing fit. We drew Manchester United um, in the next round, and I did have it open and I've closed it like an idiot. Where is it? We play them on the 16th of March, which is now the game before the international break. So the Merseyside derby has been moved back. Um, it's at Old Trafford. We'll probably both rotate, I presume, especially going into an international break. But, I mean, It'd be fun knocking Man United out. It's always fun to knock Man United out of anything. Very much so. But what 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 do you make of it? What do you make of the fixture, Carl? Um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have been my choice. I, I mean, call me crazy, but I really wanted City at Anfield. You know, I, I thought it would have been interesting to play City twice in a row at Anfield. No, not, um, not again. Good <laughs> chance to. To do some damage, um, 
you know, and if not City, obviously you're always going to think, okay, give us Leicester at home. You know, the the easier, no disrespect to Leicester, but they, they would be easier than than some of the Premier League opposition in there. Um, but that said, I don't fear United. I, I know that the nil all was was sketchy. I know lately they they do seem to have a bar that Fulham lost. They do seem to have a bit of air about them. Where despite playing not great they still somehow managed to to scrape wins with with, with uh, last minute goals and and such but they're not a great side um i think to get the the win at anfield they basically just had to or the law the draw sorry the the, the win draw it, it was it was a win for them it was a win for yeah them. <laughs> um they just had to park the bus and and even then they relied on us having an off day but but at Old Trafford obviously their fans aren't going to allow them to, to play that way they're going to have to 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 go forward and you know I, I think I saw their um Carragher make an analysis of the defending and and the, when they they try and play football the, the gap they leave between their their midfield and and defence, you you could park a jumbo jet there. Like <laughs> there's so much space to play in. So I have full confidence that that we we'd be able to to punish them. And and obviously by that point, you know we should have Mo and and Dom and Darwin well back in the team. Uh, potential for for Curtis to be back by then as well. I don't think he's quite ruled out till till after the international break yet. Um and you know, we should have more options um, and hopefully enough to, to beat them. But the, the big question is just the timing of it. You know, we've got Man City before that and we know we're going to have to put everything in at Anfield to, to beat Man City. And that's a massive game. It's a must win for me if, if we want to win the title. I know so I've seen some people say a draw would be enough. I, I don't think so. I think we have to win. If we draw, it's probably just handing an advantage to Arsenal, to be honest. So we need to, to win. We need to take advantage of the fact we're Anfield. And we haven't beaten City in a while. You know, we, we it feels like at first we, we win last year. beat them all the time. But no, I don't think so. I think it's. I thought we beat the Manfield last year. No, a blanket now. I thought it was. Because uh... I thought we were awful, weren't they? Like everyone was going, they'll be invincible and la di da. Then we beat them when we were awful. I might be wrong. It might be well, that. Wasn't it, was it back in the? Didn't we play them at Anfield in the fall last season? It was like that one yeah, zero. It was crappy and. Yeah, I, might be wrong. I think it may have been I... us rescuing a draw. I can't remember. I'll I'll look whilst you speak. Sorry, Cal. Yeah, but nonetheless, we haven't beaten them a lot lately. It's you know from from, from the days where we, we beat them a few games in a row, um, we haven't quite been there. And and most importantly, I don't feel we've played our best again. Actually, you're you're right. We did win one last year. Actually, it was it was uh, I think when the game we played four four two and had uh, Jada and Harvey Elliott on the wings, and they both ran their socks off so much so that Jada ended up getting injured and uh, missed a few games. Then, um, but but even then, obviously, it was a really well hard fought win by Liverpool, but it wasn't you know the easiest on the eye. You know, it wasn't like we 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 played our best football. We we just battled uh, and and grind it out and don't get me wrong I, I take that um in in a couple of weeks time but at the same time you, you want us to show that you know we're just as good as man city on our day and mm-hmm. um, because I, I feel we are um but nonetheless it's it's going to take so much effort to, to win that game so how much is going to be left in the tank for for united in the cup and for united it's very much going to be a cup final you know this is the only competition they can win um, and and not just that. Obviously, being at home to to Liverpool, they're they're going to want to put it all in and and try and hurt us. So, you know, if they have that little bit more in the tank, um, hopefully they also kind of uh, wear themselves out because they're they're they, they are in, within reach of of uh, Champions League football at the moment. So it, it's not like they're going to be on the beach and and kind of resting players in the league. Obviously, so um, hopefully. Um, we'll be equally tired and uh, we, we can we can win out but um, you know as I say if you want to win every you know win, win the cups you, you have to to beat what's put out in front of you obviously and, and uh, we've, we've beaten Arsenal away so far so why can't we beat Man United away as well yeah that's the thing and if if, if we do win 
um, it does open up slightly because just to go through the other, the rest of the draw, uh, Wolves drew Coventry at home, uh, we were away to an Old Trafford against United, Man City against Newcastle at the Etihad, and Chelsea, who will probably draw nil nil with in the final, uh, have have Leicester at home. So it is quite an open um, draw. Um, Man City probably wanted to avoid Newcastle, but Newcastle aren't the same as what they were last season or even earlier in the season. So yeah, you'd imagine. Um, Man City should beat them um, but yeah you'd imagine the winner of our tie would probably be the favourites to join them in the final depending on the draw but um, Lisa Marie your, your thoughts on Man United before we uh, finish up well I have a more selfish reason for us wanting to beat them because I'm working with an architect on a project right now really nice guy but he is a City fan and yeah I just you know I don't want to hear. I've already had to hear to hear him talk about you know repeating the trouble. So we, we've got to knock him out. <laughs> we, we've, <laughs> we've got to we've got to do something. Um, yeah, no, I. It, it'll be interesting. I mean, United. You know, I think. You know, we've certainly got enough to beat them in Old Tra- Trafford. Um, you know, it is unfortunate that it's. You know, we won't. Again, a month ago, if you had said, "Oh, we, you know, we'd have to be up against City and United with Allison out injured," you you might be a bit nervous about that. But that's honestly the least of my worries, you know. At at this point in time, you know, I'm just hoping if we've got Salah and Darwin back, and you know, and you know, some of these others, then it it really on our day we certainly can do it. And um, you know, it'll just. It'll just be interesting to see. Just please, God, no more, no more injuries between now and then. Hopefully, we're getting people back, not not losing anybody else. One of the injured lads has got to be on the bench for Forest. Swear, God, <laughs> one of us. <laughs> you know, I I I do think you know, and maybe this is just my internal eternal optimism speaking, but the fact that you know, Gak played for the most part, the whole match today makes you think that, you know, he's he's not meant to start on mm. on you know on Saturday that that Salah and or Darwin should, you know, should be back at least to be able to start. Um, you know, again, hope springs eternal, but but that's just that's just my thinking. And I mean, you know, if Darwin can can, you know, race down the steps and vault over the, you know, whatever to to get to get down there to celebrate the win, then, you know, surely he can at least put in, you know, 45, 60 minutes on the pitch. <laughs> You'd hope so. Oh, the, medical, you know. the medical staff might have some explaining to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll finish up there. Thank you, everyone, for listening, especially those live on Discord. And thank you, Carl and Lisa Marie, for jumping in. This has been last minute as well, because I did Carl match it, try to jinx the podcast, because that's what he does. <laughs> um, but thank you, everyone, for listening. Goodbye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network. With everything you have on your plate, earning your degree online seems impossible. But at Grand Canyon University, we specialize in helping you fit a master's degree in education into your busy day. Your graduation team, led by your own GCU counselor, provides you with the personal support you need to succeed. Achieve your goals with a plan and team behind you. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu.